Welcome to my channel, Soldiers of Jesus and Mary. And today I want to share with you my testimony. I hope you like it and I hope it helps you in some way. And I just want to start by saying that my name is Graciela or Grace. I am the second of four children. My father was a musician and my mom a housewife. I was six years old when my parents decided to move to Texas. We lived in the border of Mexico and the US. I remember learning my rosary prayers like the Our Father and the Hail Mary at a very early age. That's all thanks to my mom for taking me to all her relatives' novenas. And uh, if you didn't know, a novena is a nine-day prayer cycle. In Mexico, when a relative dies, it's a custom for the family to gather and pray the rosary for nine consecutive days or even nine months. This helps the dead get out of purgatory early and helps them enter heaven much sooner. Shortly after arriving to the U.S., my parents decided they were going to work in agriculture. That left us to move to California, where I lived the most happiest years of my youth. As I was getting ready to do my first communion, I remember one time our catechism teacher asked us a question. She asked if the sick woman from the Bible could be healed by just touching Jesus' garment. I quickly raised my hand and answered, No, Jesus needs to want to heal her. The teacher looked at me and said, You're wrong. She can be healed by just having faith in Jesus. That discovery changed my life. I went on to do my first communion at the age of 10. Neither of my parents could attend my ceremony due to work, but my godmother, who I love with all my heart, brought me the largest, most beautiful white first communion dress. I was the happiest girl at church. Five years later, we moved to North Dakota, where my father had bought some land and two trailer houses. I graduated from high school at age 16 and started college at 17, but Martin and I couldn't wait any longer and five months before my college graduation, we got married through the Catholic Church. We had such a beautiful wedding in Mexico. His family and mine met at a wedding at the wedding and it was the best day of my life. After our wedding we moved to a different city in Texas and I graduated from college like I had promised my mom. My husband and I were living a dream. We were trying to make up for the time we spent apart from one another. Everything was joy and happiness, and after two years in our marriage, I became pregnant. We were so happy, and all we could do is love our unborn baby. But one morning, everything changed for us. I was rushed to the hospital for bleeding. I passed out, and when I woke up, I asked the nurse if my baby was okay. The nurse looked at me and said, You had a miscarriage. I went into shock and screamed and cried. The nurse, trying to console me, said, You're so young, you can have another one. No, I replied, I want this one. I cried until they got me a tranquilizer to sleep. After that, I fell in a depression, a most a deep depression as most women do after losing a baby. I stopped eating and bathing and I just wanted to lay in bed and cry. My husband had to take off time from work to look after me. He force fed me and bathed me. The saddest thing to me was that my baby passed away the same day my dad died, except five years later. 
After the miscarriage, I got a job at the same place where my husband worked. We were earning good money, but our relationship was hurting due to our work schedule. We hardly ever saw each other. I remember saying to God, is this it? Is this my life now? I worked at the call center for three years until one day I was taking calls and 30 minutes before my lunch break, I heard a voice telling me, at lunchtime, take off your headphones, turn off your computer, get in the car and drive to the Basilica of San Juan del Valle. I quickly laughed and ignored it. Then again, for the second time, it told me the same instructions. This time, I fought with the idea. I said, I don't even know where that church is at. My license plates are expired and one of my taillights is broken. But then, I heard it the third time. I took off my headphones, turned off my computer, got inside my car, and drove to the Basilica during my lunch break. Once I got there, I saw her, the statue of Our Lady of San Juan del Valle. I said, hi, Virgencita. I don't know why I'm here. Then a priest asked me if he could pray for me, and I said yes. The next day, the same thing happened, and every day after that, I mentioned this to one of my aunts who had recently converted. As soon as I mentioned this, she jumped up and said, It's Jesus calling you. He's calling you. I didn't understand. I didn't see Jesus anywhere. She then told me that Jesus was inside the tabernacle where the gold box is in the adoration room. She explained to me that the consecrated host is the true body and blood of Jesus Christ. The next time I went to church, I did what my aunt instructed me. And when I walked in the presence of God, my life completely changed. That day I had a vision where I saw Jesus hanging on the cross bleeding. But I couldn't even look at his toes because I felt so unworthy. I felt like I was less than trash. I cried to the floor and told him, I don't have anything to offer you. I'm empty. I don't have anything to offer you. The only thing I have is my life. So here it is. Take it. It's yours now. In that moment, I literally thought I was going to die. But somehow, I didn't. He didn't take my life like I imagined. He took my life in a different way. After that, I fell in love with Jesus. I would drive 30 minutes to church just to spend time with him in adoration at the tabernacle. I felt a sweet, sweet love. The only way I can explain it is as if he was a boyfriend but with a pure type of love. Time passed and I started learning about the saints and their love for Jesus. I made myself watch all the saints movies and all the saint movies there were ever made. One day after quitting my job, I was laying on my bed watching celebrity news and I accidentally dropped my remote control under the bed. And when I grabbed the remote, it accidentally changed to EWTN. That's Eternal World Television Network, Mother Angelica. Then I saw Mother Angelica and she was pointing at me. She said, you! Yes, you look at your right and you will find a book full of dust that someone gave to you and you have never opened. So I looked to my right and there was my Bible my mother had given me and it was full of dust. My husband quickly noticed my devotion and it didn't make him happy that his wife was spending all day at church and that I spoke all day about God and the saints. Every time I invite every time I would invite him to mass, he would tell me that his soccer game on TV was more important and that he didn't marry a nun. 
To avoid confrontation and arguments, I just told Our Lady of Guadalupe, Mother Mary, you deal with him. He's all yours. Fix him. I guess Our Lady really did fix him because after some time, he actually told me to hurry up because we were going to be late for Mass. As we were both now getting closer to Jesus and actually having a good life, our Lord decided to send us a very difficult test. One day I woke up with extreme pelvic pain and discomfort. I was rushed to the hospital as I passed out from the pain. I had several tests done and a sonogram showed that I was pregnant. I remember looking at the nurse's nervous face. I'm sorry to inform you, she said. You're pregnant, but we have to terminate your pregnancy because your life is at risk. I couldn't process what she was telling me. I felt so confused and I said, why? What's wrong? She then showed, showed us the image of the sonogram and pointed at my fallopian tubes and she showed me the baby was growing and if he grew a little more I would bleed to death she called it an ectopic pregnancy I immediately went into shock I, I didn't want to die and I didn't want my baby to be aborted I started shaking uncontrollably and they made my husband sign the authorization for the termination procedure. As I was laying on the bed, I remembered those words my mother had told me once. She said, Whatever, whenever you feel in danger, call on the precious blood of Jesus and cover yourself. He will protect you. In my desperate, in my desperate situ situation, I started pleading the blood of Jesus. I covered me and my baby with his precious blood. Then the nurse pushed my bed to take me to the surgery room for the termination. But as I turned my head, I saw a doctor put on his white gown. And instead of the gown, I saw white feathers like it was an angel. He ran towards my bed and stopped it. He then told the nurse he would take it from there. He looked at me and said, are you aware of what they were going to do? In shock, I just continued shaking without answering. He told me, I'm going to give you 24 hours. And in those 24 hours, if you feel any pain, you need to rush to the hospital immediately. I shook my head in agreement. That night, I must have prayed a hundred rosaries so my pain would not come back. But in the morning, the in inevitable happened. I felt a sharp pain, almost unbearable. My husband carried me to the car and was driving extremely fast to the hospital. In that moment, I was crying because I knew what was going to happen to my baby. I suddenly said, stop the car. My husband ignored me. Then I repeated myself. I insisted, stop the car. He stopped and, and told me that I'm going to die if we don't get there on time. I said, take me to the tabernacle to see Jesus. Wor worriedly, he said, no, you, you need to go to the hospital. I insisted and he agreed. As I walked into the presence of the Lord, I fell to the ground in front of Jesus consecrated, and on my knees I begged him, and I said to and I said to him to save my baby. As I cried on the floor, my husband felt a sudden sensation of peace, like if God told him in his heart that everything was going to be all right. He even felt bad to see me cry, heartbroken, and he felt good. After being in adoration at the tabernacle, I no longer felt pain. So we decided to camp all day long in front of the tabernacle where Jesus is consecrated. From morning to night, we were there at the Basilica of San Juan del Valle, asking God and the saints for a miracle. On the third day of adoration, as I was crying to our Lord, someone came behind me and touched my back. 
It was as if her hand had whipped up all my pain and suffering just with that touch. She then hugged me and told me I was at the correct place. She then told my husband and I a story about a pregnant woman who was going to lose her baby and God saved him. My husband and I just looked at each other and said, that's where we're at. So she gave me an image of Our Lady and told us her name was San Juana. And then she disappeared. When I told my aunt what had happened, she asked me to describe the lady. I said she was wearing a black long dress with a scapular and two long braids and her skin color was browned. My aunt then stayed quiet for a moment and then said, You just described Our Lady of San Juan, and her name was San Juana. I was so shocked, but was very concerned about my baby, so I just went back to adoration and asked Jesus for a miracle. As we went back to our doctor's appointment, we were very nervous, and the doctors decided to do another sonogram on me. His face turned into sadness, and he told us, that there was good news and bad news. He said, the baby is no longer in the fallopian tube. The sack of water is positioned exactly where it's supposed to be, but the sack of water is empty. I'm sorry to tell you, there is no baby. If you can imagine, I was going crazy. The doctor suggested for me to take an injection that would help me release the sack of water and that would end the pregnancy. But he saw me so distraught that he said, I'll give you 24 hours so you can feel better. I remember getting into the car and just losing my faith on, faith on God. But if it wasn't for my husband, how he sustained me with his word. I would have lost my faith. As I was crying, asking God, where are you? He then looked at, he then took my hand and said, God is not done yet. He positioned the sack of water where it's supposed to be and he will finish the job. He will not fail us. I repented for not trusting in him and we immediately went back to our duration. We stood there begging Jesus, the doctor of all doctors, to heal our baby and to make him appear back in my stomach. We also asked intercession from St. Juan Diego, the least child of them all, who helped Our Lady of Guadalupe in the operations in Mexico. As we went back to the doctor, I was expecting the worst, just so that I wouldn't be surprised. As the doctor was going doing the sonogram, he called another doctor and several nurses. I thought I was going to die. Then he st started crying and he said, Do you want to hear something? Yes, we answered. He then turned up the volume of the sonogram machine and we heard little heartbeats. But we didn't know what it was. The doctor with tears in his eyes said, this could only be a miracle. There is a heartbeat. You have a baby in the sack forming. I just couldn't be more happy. And I felt I was in debt with God. And I could no longer turn my back on him. My baby has born, my baby has born premature with a broken clavicle. But very healthy and strong. His name is Diego in honor of St. Juan Diego and his intercession. My baby is now 12 years old and loves Jesus with all his heart. I now have a total of three children and to this day I can't stay away from my God who showed me what little faith you can move mountains with. I hope this testimony helps everyone who is going through the difficult time of having a dangerous pregnancy. All I can say is trust in the Lord and don't stop praying. May God hear your prayers and bless you. And that is the end of my testimony. I pray that 
this testimony may be heard by women all over the world who are experiencing a difficult pregnancy. Don't give up. Run to the tabernacle. Run to Jesus. He's the doctor of all doctors. May God bless you. And don't, rem don't forget. Viva Cristo Rey!